Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make yeast waffles and this is what they look like. The outside crust of these waffles is wonderfully crisp, yet inside they are light, they're fluffy, and they're just so moist. So to make the batter, even though we're using yeast, there's no kneading of the dough. We make this batter very similar to a regular waffle batter, by that I mean ones that we use baking powder and or baking soda to get the lift. So in a large bowl, I have two cups, which is 260 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. To that, I like my waffles a little sweet. So I'm adding three tablespoons, 40 grams of granulated white sugar. If you want your waffles to be a little more savory, then you could cut back on that sugar. And then I'm adding a half a teaspoon, two grams of salt. And then of course we need yeast. I'm adding one and a half teaspoons, which is five grams. I'm using F SAF red instant yeast. I like the instant yeast, it gives a good rise, but plus with this type of yeast, you don't need to proof it. You just put it right in with your dry ingredients. But if you can't find it or you don't have it, you could use an equal amount of the active dry yeast, but what you will have to do is activate that in a little bit. We're using some milk, so what you will want to do is take a little of that milk, heat it to lukewarm, and then activate your yeast. And then I'm actually adding a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram of baking soda. I know we have the yeast, but the baking soda, why I use that, is that add, it actually gives a little more lift to our waffles, so they'll be a little more lighter and fluffier, but it also helps with browning the outside crust, crust and then making it nice and uh, crisp. So I'm just going to whisk those together. Now you want to use a fairly large bowl, and I'll tell you why later. <laughs> So that's our dry. For our wet ingredients, you will need two large eggs, which 100 grams of eggs. And I just have them at room temperature. And to that, just whisk those, I'm going to add one and three quarter cups, which is 420 milliliters of milk. And I just have my milk at room temperature. Now you can use whole milk, I mean, or you could use, say, a 2%. If you have whole milk, of course, your waffles will have a richer flavor than, you know, if you use a reduced fat. I'm just going to pour that in there. And then I'm adding just a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram of pure vanilla extract. I like the flavor of that. Now, if you were going to like serve your waffles maybe with bacon or something like that or and you didn't want the vanilla the sweetness of that you can just leave that out and then our last ingredient is a half a cup 113 grams of butter that I've melted and then I let it cool down a little it's going to add a nice rich flavor to our waffles so now what I'm going to do is just add are wet to our dry and whisk or stir it all together. So as you can see, if you've made waffles or pancakes, not with yeast, but with baking powder or soda, it's a very similar batter. But that yeast adds a really nice, not strong, but a, like a nice mild yeasty flavor, which I really like. But the best part, the thing I really like about this bat is uh, you make it the night before. So you, if you were say having guests or something, or just you don't feel like doing it in the morning, you can just make this and, th and then I'm just going to uh, just put that there. Then you just cover it and put it into the refrigerator. Like that's it. And what happens overnight, it will rise. You'll get like a slow rise. If you've ever made like no knead bread where you just kind of mix everything together and then just let, your, let it sit. So you'll get a slow rise. And then what's also good is 
that develops the nice yeast flavor because if you let it sit, you know, it's going to uh, do that. You can actually refrigerate this for two, maybe three days, so you can kind of bake your waffles on demand. Now, if you wanted to, like you kind of go, no, I don't want to do it overnight. What you can do is just let this batter sit at room temperature for about an hour. It will rise and get kind of bubbly on the top. So you could do it that way. But I'm going to put it in the fridge overnight. And then when we come back, we will bake our uh, waffles. So waffles have that wonderful honeycomb design. And that comes from cooking our waffles in a waffle machine or also called a waffle iron. They come, you know, there's all kinds of brands. They come in different sizes, shapes. This one here I'm using has two square ones. I've seen you know, round ones, heart-shaped ones, so lots of choices there. But what I like with a yeast waffle is to use a waffle iron that has these, the grids are quite deep. I find that gives you, really br brings out the flavor and the texture of a yeast waffle. Uh, these machines are all, often called a Belgian waffle machine, so just keep that in mind. And temperature. That's the big thing when you're cooking waffles. If you have your temperature too high, what happens is your waffles will kind of brown too fast and then the inside will be under, not cooked. Or conversely, if you have it too low, then your waffles won't get that nice crisp outside crust. So, I mean, mine does not have a temperature gauge. So, you know, read your manual when you're doing something like this. And, you know, you may have, you're probably going to have to play around with it. But what I did is I experimented a bit and then I have this infrared thermometer. So what I did is kind of got my perfect temperature and then I measured the heat and it was at 375 Fahrenheit, which is 190 degrees Celsius. So that's for my waffle iron. So you can kind of use that as a gauge. And then, so what we're gonna do is I really wanna heat that up because we want it nice and hot when we put our batter and that's what I'm going to do. And then when we come back, we will cook our waffles. So we're now ready to cook our waffles. You can see it's kind of bubbly on top. So now read your manufacturer's instructions of how much batter you should put on each, uh, for each waffle. For mine, it is like a scant half a cup, 120 milliliters. But again, depending on your waffle machine, me, <laughs> different amounts. So there, oh, see it's, it kind of looks like a bread dough. And then, now mine waffle iron, the surface is really been used a lot, so it's well seasoned. Depending on whether you're using a non-stick or not, you may have to spray or butter, spray your, uh, or oil your grids. So check your manual. And then, I'm just gonna put that in there. And then shut it. So now, how long to cook it? Again, it depends. For my machine, five, about five minutes. So I, that's a rough amount. So you're just gonna have to experiment. Do one and see how it works. So five, for me, five minutes. So it's been five minutes, so let's check. Oh, don't they look wonderful? I did overfill just a little. That's okay. So let's take them out. Oh, wonderful. Now close your waffle iron if you want to make more. I like to let my waffle iron heat up for a few minutes before I put another batch. So there we have our waffle. They are really good, just like this. Now, I'm going to say, do you like your waffles for breakfast or do you like them for dessert? I'm going to show you both. I don't find they need any butter because we did put quite a bit of butter in the batter. Maple syrup, always a favorite. They're good with jam as well. And the maple syrup, you got all those little grids, which are just perfect for holding our syrup. If you prefer like more of a dessert, you could put some fresh, I'm going to put some fresh strawberries, any kind of fruit, 
berries, you know, on there with a little bit of whipped cream. Use some creme fraiche or yogurt or something like that. And then to finish that off, powdered sugar. Which one to eat? I have a real weakness for the maple syrup. Must be that Canadian background. Oh. Inside, they're like soft bread. Like with, now, with the overnight rice in the refrigerator, they have a slight yeast flavor. Not really strong. I don't like it really strong. Just a nice um, flavor to that. Now, like I said, you can keep the batter in the fridge for a couple days. Or what you could do is bake them all off, and then you can refrigerate. Once the waffles have cooled down, you could refrigerate them for a day or two or you can even freeze them to cook them or to reheat them. Some people like to put their waffles back in the waffle iron for, you know, just a, a, like maybe a minute or so to heat them back up. Some people like to put them into about a 350 degree Fahrenheit or 180 degree Celsius oven until they crisp up. Or what I always do is just throw them in my toaster. And, but you will find that you do them, say, in the toaster, the outside, they will become a little more crispy on the outside than, say, when you use a waffle iron. So lots of choices there, but you have to try these. People will love them. So until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.